This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. Security and safety on public transit is top of mind this morning after a trolley passenger was slashed with a knife while asleep during a ride. It happened in La Jolla, and that is where we find NBC 7's Nicole Gomez with why this is especially concerning. Well, this was concerning for a number of reasons, but the big one is that it happened in daylight at around 5 p.m. when the victim probably assumed it was safe to get on the trolley and take a little bit of a nap. But the next thing you know, he's getting slashed in the chest and is recovering in the hospital. Here's a map to show you where exactly this happened. It was on the Nobel Drive trolley line between La Jolla and University City. Police say a 21 year old trolley passenger fell asleep and during the ride, another man slashed him in the chest and somehow got away. The victim was taken to the hospital for treatment. No word on if he was a student at UCSD. The search continues for the suspect. Meantime, the incident comes a month after MTS approved millions of dollars in security funding in an effort to increase ridership. MTS announced it would add 30 more compliance inspectors to patrol the transit system, boosting the total to 90. That's a 60% increase from before. The agency also has 200 private security officers deployed through its contracted private security firm, Intercon. The total annual cost for this increase about $4.2 million. City Council members spoke about the security in the La Jolla area at the MTS board meeting last month. What I'm also hearing from um, the students at UCSD is that this addresses is uh, the new trolley station at UCSD uh, having that perception of security uh, in whatever fashion. Well, it's not clear when that funding took effect and if the added security is already on the job. Reporting from La Jolla, Nicole Gomez, NBC7. Over the weekend, we saw thousands of people here in San Diego hold protests. Take a look right now. You're looking at two different rallies in downtown. On the left, you can see demonstrators in support of Palestinian people. On the right, supporters of Israel. NBC7 spoke with a family that returned from Israel after surviving the attacks. Isaac Adavi was in Israel during the initial attack with his wife and four kids. We're so scared for our lives like that the terrorists could have come into the houses and taken any of our kids. So it was something very, very frightening. And uh, we didn't know when it could have stopped. You know, we didn't know how it was coming, where it was coming from and, and what was going to happen next. And some demonstrators are urging Congress to call for a ceasefire and stop funding to Israel. Today is the deadline to register to vote to get a mail-in ballot for the November 7th special election. Former Board of Supervisor Nathan Fletcher's District 4 seat appears to be one of the biggest races on the ballot. Council members Monica Montgomery Stepp and Reopen San Diego founder Amy Reichert are running for that seat. In Chula Vista, people will vote to fill the vacant seat for city attorney for the remainder of the term until December 2026 and people in Fallbrook and Rainbow will finally get a chance to vote on whether they'll leave the San Diego County Water Authority so they can buy water cheaper from a wholesaler in Riverside County. If you live in those areas, you can mail in your ballot or vote in person at the registrar's office through Election Day on November 7th. We want to warn you about a freeway closure in the Lemon Grove area. It's happening tonight. The 94 will be closed from the Spring Street overpass all the way to the Bancroft Drive overpass. The connector taking you from northbound 125 to the eastbound 94 will be closed. Those closures start at 9 tonight. They end at 5 tomorrow morning. Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hi, Sheena. Hey, Monica, as we head through the rest of the day today, we are going to have a slight chance for maybe a couple stray showers. They'll be pretty light, nothing very heavy, nothing widespread, but temperatures will stay cool, breezy onshore wind near 70 inland and for the coast mountains in the 50s overnight tonight, partly cloudy and it's going to be cooler to upper 50s at the coast by tomorrow morning, low 50s for the inland valleys, 40s in the mountains. Tomorrow inland will be dry around 77, but then we start to cool back down again by Thursday, low 70s, maybe a chance for sprinkles. Thank you, Sheena. It's time to prepare what state leaders want you to have at the ready ahead of what's predicted to be another wet winter. We'll have that and much more still to come. Stay with us. 
NBC7 and Telemundo 20 Response is dedicated to helping you. You guys were able to get a different result. I have so much gratitude. Whether it's in Spanish or English. We're one team. One team. Investigating, getting answers, making sure every phone call, every email gets a response. Because this isn't just our job. This is our community too. And we're here to help. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 Response. One team fighting for you and your money. This is San Diego News Daily. The city of San Diego is looking at a site near Liberty Station as a place to open a homeless shelter next year. But some people who live in Point Loma are not happy about that. It would be located at Barracks H across the pedestrian bridge from Liberty Station near the airport parking lot and across from the bay. Neighbors who are against the idea have started an online petition hoping to stop the project. They say it's too close to schools and fields for youth sports. My son is a Little League baseball player. He's eight years old and at a local Little League game on a Saturday morning when the, the fields are busy with kids, my son and I walked into the bathroom and encountered a homeless man without pants with a needle in his arm. And as a father, it was so hard to communicate to my eight year old what had happened to this man. City leaders say they're aware of the concerns and they plan to include community engagement as part of the process of considering this idea. After the hot, dry weekend we had, you're probably not thinking about cold and rain, but winter is just around the corner and it's expected to be wetter than normal due to El Nino. So as NBC7's Audra Stafford explained, state officials are urging you to get prepared now. I'm here near the intersection of Via Veracruz and San Marcos Boulevard. You can see Via Veracruz has been torn up. This is part of a major road repair and infrastructure project to help deal with some of the problems they experience every time it rains here in San Marcos. The San Marcos Creek is very close to here, and when we do get a lot of rain like we did last winter, it tends to overflow its banks and cause all kinds of flooding and other problems. And these types of issues aren't unique to San Marcos all across San Diego County. When it rains a lot, like it did last winter, we see flooded roads, sinkholes and other problems. And those problems cost taxpayers a lot of money. But fixing the infrastructure isn't cheap either. The city of San Diego says fixing its outdated stormwater system is projected to cost $1.3 billion and take years. In the meantime, there is something small that each one of us can do right now to help stop littering. That'll help keep our storm drains from getting clogged and help prevent flooding this winter. And some other things you can do right now during this California Flood Preparedness Week to get ready for the winter. Make sure you have an emergency kit together and know your evacuation routes in case the roads around your home do get flooded. It's also a good idea to sign up for mobile alerts now so that you'll be ready to go when the rain comes. From San Marcos, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. And it was a drizzly start to the day. We'll have a look at your weather forecast right after this. Looking for NBC San Diego on Roku? The easiest way to find us is with Roku voice commands. Just press the microphone button on your remote and say live TV and then say NBC San Diego. If you don't have voice commands on your remote, just scroll down to live TV, click the purple icon, go over to the left and navigate to news. Then head on down to NBC San Diego News. Once you've got us, make sure you add us to your favorites and we'll always be right there for you. NBC San Diego News on Roku. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parvey. And for today, we're going to have just a very slight chance of a couple more afternoon showers in the forecast there. Breezy onshore wind, cool temperatures through the afternoon. And then tonight, we're going to be partly cloudy and cooler tomorrow morning. So I think you might want that jacket for sure. Even the rest of the week, we have cool temperatures in the forecast, unseasonably cool as we head into the weekend. So it's going to continue to feel like fall, especially for the mountains and the deserts. You're going to be getting a nice break too from all the heat. Not too bad. Thank Thank you, Sheena. NBC7 and Telemundo 20's annual fall food drive benefiting the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank is now underway. You can donate all month long at your local Barron's Market or online. For more information, go to NBC7.com community and we have more coverage account on it at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.